Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Mac Tuna Questions and for the amazing iPad. And today I want to have a look at an application called Day One. Here we are using Day One on the Mac and it's a great little app for doing a journal or a diary. So here we are in Day One and you can see we've got a couple of different views. We've got this view here where we can see the days when we've done some posting to Day One. I didn't do much there in August but I've done more in uh, September. Obviously I was working during August. And uh, basically I can see what's in these things here by just messing over the top of them. So that's quite handy. So here's what I've been working on for today. And I've just discovered today that this application also supports Markdown. Isn't that good? So here we are in this application and what we're going to do with this is we're going to do a new post. So we click on the plus there and we can get started. So it is very useful that you can use the journaling application day one using the dictation feature within Mountain Lion. Full stop. It's also very handy that what you can do with this is that you can use the features of Markdown to make things look a bit better. So there is some bit of Markdown in there. So you can see that's going to give that a header two. If I want to select this here and do Command B, that will make it bold. And I can use this one here to do Command I if I want something in italics. So of course, you can do the uh, lists as well. So we've got list one. So that's very handy. Another good thing with this is that I can go to this one here and I can do share. And I can send it off as an email. Send it through iMessage or messages as it's now called. Or I can send it out through Twitter. Obviously, if you use your markdown in day one, then it's not going to work out very well if you use the... Uh, Markdown for this here, so you probably need to take out those little bits there. So let's click on send, and that's going to go out through Twitter now. <whistles> Lovely. So, uh, one of the things that I heard about with this application was that uh, on a podcast it would be mentioned as a very, very good app to use, <laughs> but this person hadn't taken the trouble to find out about the feature that you can use to schedule some posting. Why this is so good is because like most things like this, unless you have it in front of you, you'll forget about it and you won't bother because you'll get locked into doing something else and you'll forget that you're supposed to be putting in some details of your daily occurrences. So if we go to the settings for this application, command and comma, and we can see here we've got the general settings. So we've got open and last view and all this sort of stuff. Use Fahrenheit temperature scale as for those people that live in the old world with imperial measurements. So we've got the data file, then I'm doing this through Dropbox, but I could have it going through iCloud if I wanted to. So you can also choose the type of font that you're going to use and the size of the font. And there you've got the choice whether you want to use Markdown or not. I like Markdown, so I'm going to leave that set. And we've got reminders, and this is the interesting part. This is what's going to remind you to keep up to date with day one. So first of all, you enable reminders, you tell it to play a sound and open the menu bar quick entry or go to the notification center. The menu bar quick entry is over here. So if I go to the menu bar, click on that there and this thing comes up and I can start putting in a post directly into that there. So this is what you do, you start setting it up with this. This is very good to make sure that you really do use this application day in and day out. To keep track of what you are doing click on save and that goes straight into your application so there you go that's the bit i just put in there and it's down at the bottom of my list so here we are in reminders as i said this is really useful to have your reminders so you can set it up how many reminders that you want or how often those reminders are going to be start at 10 o'clock in the morning for me there's no point in me having them before that and the reminders will end at 11 o'clock in the evening if I go this way with it, I will get fewer reminders during the day. So this means I'm only get one reminder and it's going to happen at 10 o'clock. I would rather do posts that are short and sweet to this application during the day. And I set it so that it's going to give me four reminders per day. Just by moving that slider across, I can have it set. I can have seven reminders per day if it's every two hours. Or I could go the full hog with this here and maybe have 27 reminders per day. And that's going to be a bit too much. That would be every 30 minutes it would be popping up. So I'm going to have it so that every four hours you're going to say, hang on a minute, put something in there. So when this pops up of its own accord, you also get other things on there. You can tell it to come back in 10 minutes, come back in one hour, or you can tell it to skip. 
sometimes you're just too busy to do something or in the middle of something you say okay we'll just do that in 10 minutes and you say click do it 10 minutes or you might skip that one altogether and do it later in the day okay so that's how to set up your reminders if you're putting a lot of personal stuff in there, then you can enable password protection. I don't put stuff in there that's terribly personal. I just want to keep an eye on what I'm doing in the day to keep myself productive. So I don't need to have password protection on there. And you can also do backups. This one does a backup every day. And I can change that it does backups every two days or every week if I want to. So that's pretty good too. And you can tell it how many backup files you want to keep. So there you go. Why would you want synchronization? Well, it works on the iPhone and the iPad as well. Now, what I like about it on the iPad is that I can talk to it. I can also do my dictation. and I don't have to type using the on-screen keyboard or any other sort of keyboard. That's pretty good. I like that. So, Now, another thing I found recently which is quite useful is the fact that you can use day one to put in photographs. I didn't know that you could do that before. Let's go to one where I've got a photograph in there. And this is one that's from Saturday when I was out climbing. What you can also do, if you set this up in day one on your iPad or on your iPhone, is you can connect it up to Foursquare. So if you take a picture with Foursquare and check in, then that will go into day one as well. So let's have a quick look at this and see how it looks when we're using the iPad version. Okay then, so here we are in the iPad version of day one. And as you can see, we've got all the stuff in there that I was working on before and let's go to the timeline we've got the stuff at the top so this is something i was doing earlier you saw me do that previously on the imac and what's kind of nice with this as well is you've got other things happening with this as well look so let's go back to the menu again let's go to photos i've got one photo in there you see there's a photo and if i click on the photo in the app it takes me to the day where that photograph is so i can release for next you can star photographs, so there's the one that I starred. Let's go to the settings on this. Synchronization again done through Dropbox. Passcode is off, or the passcode is on. And I'm going to cancel that because I don't really need a passcode on this here. As you see, I've turned on Foursquare. I've got Markdown switched on here again as well. And I can auto bold first line if I want to as well. That's very nice. Okay, well, as you can see, this one here, we've got some extra details in there. It's uh, uh, put my location in there, Santa Cristina d'Aro, Catalonia in Spain. And it's also put in the temperature. And as you can see at the time when I wrote that, it was uh, just after midnight. And so it's told me that it was at night time too. It's got a little uh, moon sign on there and that it was cloudy. So I'm getting weather in there too. So that's kind of nice, isn't it? This is using the iPad to put another post into day one. Full stop. So I'll click on this button here and use my location and I can put photographs in there too so I can take a photograph with this here so let's take a photograph it's even got the face detection in this it's good isn't it so I'll use that so I've got a photograph in there as well the post is done how about that I can click on edit to go back into that if I want to as well if I click on that there I can set the current date or time or set the photo date or time if I want to as well changing in the time if I see fit and I can press buttons there to delete it as well so it's telling me it's 23 degrees that is the temperature where I am at present. It's quite warm, even though it's cloudy outside. Click on Done. So, as you can see, a happy David Allen doing his stuff with the iPad and with the iMac and making videos for the listeners of the Wizard Gold channel on YouTube, which is now getting called the David Allen channel because it asked me if I wanted to use my real name. I thought, well, why not? So this is Dave Allen for Mac 20 Questions and the amazing iPad. And that's how to do some stuff with day one. But bye now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And also don't forget to click on that like button. More likes we get, the better. Bye bye now. Talk to you again soon.